is the theory that nations will do things that are in their self-interest or just that they will do things that they perceive to be in their interest and may, in fact, often be wrong about that? Uh, is Which is it, that they will pursue self-interest or that they will pursue what they think is their self-interest, but that will not always correspond with actual interest? Well, they'll do what they think is in their self-interest. But right. as you know, we live in a world of radical uncertainty. And sometimes when you do something that you think is in your self-interest, it backfires and it bites you in the hiney. So the fact that you do something that you right. think is in your self-interest does not guarantee that you will succeed. Uh, as my mother used to say when I was a little boy, the right. road to hell is paved with good intentions. Um, and just this is not a realist story, but if right. you think about the liberals who took us into Iraq, they thought the liberals and the neoconservatives, they thought they were doing a good thing, not just for the United States, but for the people of Iraq. It turned out to be a giant fiasco. It was one of the major foreign policy blunders of all time. And as they, you as you predicted, as you predicted, I, I, I want to give you credit for you were against the Iraq war. Um, I remember seeing you on TV. Yes. Con I, I was struck by how confident you were that this was going to be a bad idea. I, uh, I, I was impressed because I was against the war, but I didn't feel certain about what would happen. You seem sure that this would be a very lead to a very bad outcome. And I think you should get credit for that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, I went, I was in the American military from June 1965 until August 1975, which was coterminous with the Vietnam War. So the Vietnam War influenced me as a young man in truly profound ways. And one thing I learned during the Vietnam War is you want to stay out of places like Vietnam, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Uh, in fact, with regard to Afghanistan, in the fall of 2001, before the Taliban had fall, fallen, I was warning that we better not put large ground forces into Afghanistan, uh, that this is, uh, this is jumping into a quagmire. And I thought that that's what would happen in Iraq as it happened in Vietnam. Uh, so my view is stay out of those places. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I guess here's where this question is leading about how often, I mean, you've just given us examples where a nation thought that it was in their interest to have a war. Uh, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, it's there's pretty much a consensus that, that we were wrong about Vietnam and Iraq, and uh, Afghanistan doesn't look that great in the rearview mirror. Uh, so this suggests that nations uh, are not infrequently quite wrong about when uh, it is in their interest to to have a war, and correspondingly, when it might be in their interest to have a war that violates international law. So in light of that fact, I'm not sure how you get from description to prescription, right? In other words, if nations are this bad at, uh, at pursuing war wisely, as bad as the United States has been, might it not be better for them to just adopt a rule almost by way of self-restraint that they will only pursue legal wars? Now, if we had done that, uh, if that had been a rule of thumb, we still would have gone into Afghanistan, but we wouldn't have gone into Iraq. We wouldn't have... Uh, uh, bombed, uh, intervened in Serbia, which is uh, hasn't been a disaster, but hasn't doesn't you know we're still there. It hasn't worked out all that well. Um, uh, I think you could argue that on balance, I mean, you would have still have had the Persian Gulf War. You would have had some wars and not others. Um, but uh, wouldn't you? Wouldn't the United States have been better off just saying, look, if we want to pursue a war and we can't get permission from the Security Council, we won't do it. Wouldn't that have been better? Yes, but is that the reason you don't want to pursue a war? No. Uh, I mean, the truth is that it may be the case that international law says you should not start a war, but it makes good sense to start a war, and that war turns out well. Uh, so you, hypothetically, you can imagine situations like that. Uh, 
I think on balance, you want to get uh, uh, you want to get permission from the Security Council uh, to go to war. You want to do everything you can to foster obedience to the law. It's in the American national interest to do that. Again, I am not arguing that international law or rules or institutions are irrelevant. On the contrary, for purposes right. of you know statecraft in the modern age, they're indispensable. So I think you want to write rules if you're the United States that serve your interests, and you want to go to great lengths to obey those rules as much as you possibly can. But you do want to recognize that there are going to be times where you just have to thumb your nose at the rules, to be honest. Although we don't thumb our nose. What we do is we go over to Harvard Law School or the University of Chicago Law School, and we get fancy lawyers who can explain why a violation of international law really isn't a violation of international law. Uh, but they don't right. fool people like you and I, uh, or like you and me. Uh, but nevertheless, right. that's what happens. Uh, but again, I, I, I'm not someone who has a cavalier attitude towards international law and views international law as some great obstacle. This is the neoconservative yeah. view, by the way, Bob. This is why neoconservatives hate international institutions. The only real difference between liberals, liberal internationalists, and neoconservatives, just take Madeleine Albright on one hand and Paul Wolfowitz on the other as representatives of those two schools of thought. The only real difference between them is how they think about international rules, international law, international institutions. The neoconservatives despise international law because they think that it it's the Lilliputians tying up Gulliver. My argument is this is ridiculous. Gulliver, if Gulliver wants to go to war, Gulliver's going to go to war. The Lilliputians aren't going to stop him. And the fact is, and the neoconservatives should understand this, that international law sometimes um, uh, can be very beneficial. And for that reason, uh, you want to pay attention to it and, and honor it as much as you can. 